Hello and welcome. This is Post Tonight. We're broadcasting live from Channels TV Sports Center in Lagos, Nigeria. Glad to have you join us to talk sports. I'm Austin Okonakwana on the show tonight. We'll find out what's going on in our world of golf. We'll talk about women's football, women's basketball, athletics in Nigeria. The ladies will lead the discussion tonight on this show. So walk with us as we show some love to uh, women's sports, not just in Nigeria, but in Africa and the world. We'll also uh, talk about rugby. Uh, last week, Friday, we had a coach of the Black Stallions and the technical advisor from the Nigeria Rugby Football Federation. And they told us about that invitation that they're going uh, to play in Ghana. Tomorrow, they will take on Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast defeated Ghana in the first match, then at 22 to 11. Can the Black Stallions beat Ivory Coast tomorrow and prove a point that they have what it takes to qualify for the Africa Cup, sustain the momentum, and take it to the 2020 Olympics? Remember, that's the, the objective for Coach uh, Brunson Ware. When he came here, he said, look, the Nigeria has a quality to qualify for the 2020 Olympics. We'll take a look at the development of rugby in Nigeria and use that championship in Ghana as a model for the discussion tonight. We'll also uh, take a look at the development of cycling. Yesterday, I told you on this show that Nigeria dominated the Africa Track Cup. Uh, it's the maiden edition of that cycling uh, competition. And the president of the federation says, look, with what we've seen at this championship, why is cycling omitted from the African Games? Tonight, we're listening to uh, the president of the Confederation of African Cycling. He's also talking about the development of the sport right here in Africa. We'll also take a look at uh, what's going on with the Super Eagles right after the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations. Remember, businessman and philanthropist Femi Otedola promised them 25,000 US dollars. If someone has redeemed that pledge tonight, uh, we'll keep tab with that. We'll also take a look at March Day 2 of the Nigeria Women's Premier League. That one should get us talking. About big time, the special focus is on athletics in Nigeria. Remember, we've been linking up with some of our top female athletes, knowing how they are getting ready for the African Games and the World Championships. We've spoken to Toby Loba and Musa. Last week, we had Blessing Kagbari. Tonight, we'll try to establish contact with Essie Brumet. She's an African champion in long jump. She has qualified for the Olympics and the World Championships. Essie is in from Augusta in, in Cyprus. Let's, let's see what SA has in stock for our fans for the African Games, what she thinks about the development of athletics in Nigeria, and of course, our long term aspirations. We'll talk about that one on the show. Cristiano Ronaldo is on the news tonight. What's it again this time with Cristiano Ronaldo? Hopefully, it's not about him and Lionel Messi. I will tell you. And also, Asna. They're ready to break the bank for Nicolas Pepe. I hear he's in London already uh, for, for medicals. Uh, it's that time of the season where players get to move and clubs try to do that uh, last-minute signing to boost what they have in their current squad. But Arsenal fans, let's get talking tonight. Uh, that player uh, that Unai wants to break the bank for, uh, is it worth it? Yeah, Pepe, is it worth it? Let's talk about that one tonight on the show. Sports Tonight on your award-winning sports-loving channels, television. Welcome on board. Let's do this quickly. So much is going down in our world of sports. You can be part of the show on Twitter. We're channels underscore sports. Facebook channels, I think, sports. Send us an email. Yes, you can. And I've been getting some of those emails. I'll compile all of it and see if we can read it on Friday. You guys love your sports. You love this show. Thank you so much. Let's keep the love going. Uh, all our top stories can also be viewed on our website, channelstv.com, and on YouTube for slash channels web. If you log on to m.channelstv.com, you should be able to download the Channels TV app for your iPad, your iPhone, your BlackBerry, your iOS, your Windows phones, and your Android phones. It's an action pack, so the sports so much is going down and I want you to be part of the program tonight as we take a look at some of those top stories in our world of sports. You'll like it. If you love athletics, welcome on board. Are you a fan of golf, particularly golf at the grassroots? Welcome on board. you like this one also. Uh, we will also try to uh, establish contact with um, the Nigerian team in Ivory Coast. Let's find in Ghana. Let's find out how they're getting ready for uh, that match against Ivory Coast tomorrow. It's an invitation out tournament, but it means so much for the coach and the Black Stallions uh, to see how they are getting uh, better as a team. Let's welcome uh, Femi 
Yes, but I was in the studio. From the time I'm supposed to man. Good evening, Austin. Yeah, <laughs> welcome, 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 welcome. So yeah. much is happening now. Also, I don't know what, what are you following. Are you are you also seeing all of the money's going around for signing of big players? Nicolas Pepe. <laughs> <laughs> no. He scored 22 goals for uh, um, Lille last season, 13 mm. assists. That is massive for me. And um, uh, unfortunately for him, he went to the Nations Cup and didn't really live up to expectation. But he's agile, he's clinical, he's physical, he's talented, he's skillful. This is one in a million player. Hmm. And that's my fans will be saying. <laughs> Have you seen some of them <laughs> going to look at Pepe's highlights, believing that when he comes, he can make a difference? But I'll leave that discussion. We'll come back to it. Post tonight on Channel's Television. Let's begin uh, with the grassroots. And this time it's Gov Georgia Obo, as she's been making remarkable progress. When I heard that she was trying to make the qualifiers for the British Open, I was like, it would be good for the development of golf in Nigeria. This young uh, teenage sensation, she has done so well for herself and in putting Nigeria's golf out there. Georgia Obo, she was so close. She so, so close, but she missed out on a quest for a place in the main event of the Women's British Open after suffering a setback at the final qualifying tournament for at the prestigious Women's British Open. She's young. She's got a lot uh, to still offer. So let's keep an eye on Georgia. Uh, having uh, put her name in the annals of history as the first Nigerian to compete in the final qualifying tournament, that's history. In the making right there. The first Nigerian to qualify uh, to play in the qualifying uh, tournament. Obo shot a level pass score of 72 against a strong field of 108 lady professionals or top amateurs, but came up uh, three shots. Shots. Just three shots. And she would have been there. At the leading score of 700 par at 65, and with 11 players making it to the main event from the field of 108. So uh, it's all good. It's good experience for her, Femi. She's young, and she's already getting to play against top women golfers and was so, so close to qualify for the British Open. I think our uh, incident already will be a big morale booster for other talented uh, uh, um, um, sports stars that would want to take up um, golf. Uh, she's done well already. Quite unfortunately, she's missed out on this one. But what she's done is really, really laudable. And um, uh, uh, we hope to see more of her in subsequent competi competitions. That's what it is, Georgia. Oh, but she's just 18 and she's doing so well with her golf. Uh, just missed out by three shots. Uh, quite unfortunate. But uh, I think she's doing so, so well. Uh, let's see. Uh, where she will go from here, uh, Georgia Obo. Well done. Don't don't feel bad. And at this stage, let's always remember that it's it's all about development. So let's continue to give Georgia Obo all the support that she requires. To I uh, will know someday. Remember, she has represented Nigeria at the Youth Olympics. And if she continues this way, sustain the momentum. You never know. You never know. She might just uh, take Nigeria to the very top of uh, golf in the world let's come back home now and still stay with the women but this time basketball uh defending champions of the women's afro basket yes that's the d tigress of nigeria they have been drawn with tunisia and cameroon in group b of the fiba afro basket women's uh, championship that is scheduled for august the 10th to the 18th in dakar senegal look Femi, with the d tigress look I, I've always said it, the ladies, when they have a chance to impress, they take it, they're defending champions, but they cannot afford to be complacent when they get to this championship in Dakar. Of course, they cannot afford to be complacent or overconfident when it comes to um, this competition. They are, they are a super, uh, super force when it comes to basketball in Africa, considering the fact that they had these defending champions. In this competition, all they need to do is make sure they come out tops on, of their group, and then they make it straight to the um, uh, quarterfinal. I think the way this has been um, structured is this. The, the top teams make it straight to the um, quarterfinals. The second and third teams get to play quarterfinal qualifications. Once that is done, they join their counterparts in the quarterfinal, and then they fight for a place in the semifinal. And mm. once that is done, you, the four uh, semi-finalists will make it straight to the qualifiers in Tokyo. Uh, and then two more teams will play classification games. Those ones will now join the, 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 the other four to make it to Tokyo in 2020. And then they will now fight for Africa's representative you know, for the Olympics. I think this is a good one. Yeah. We know our day tigers. We know what they can bring to the table. They are a super force when it comes to mm. basketball in Africa. And I'm sure banking on these girls to make it you know, 
to Tokyo 2020. Um, that's very possible, but let's see first thing first. They need to prove a point, go to Senegal and see if they can defend their title. But the Senegalese team also a very good side. Uh, and I'm sure some of those other um, teams that they pushed away uh, in the last edition will be waiting for Nigeria big time, one of them, Angola. Let me run through the groups once again so you get to know them and then see uh, how much of, of a difficulty it will be for uh, the D Tigers. Well, of course, the defending champions in Group A, we have Cote d'Ivoire, Egypt, and Senegal, the host. Group B, I told you this, and Tunisia. Cameroon and D Tigress of Nigeria. In Group C is Angola, DR Congo, and Mali. Group D, we have Kenya, Cape Verde, and Mozambique. The country that finishes first from the group automatically qualifies for the quarterfinals, while the other two teams will play a knockout game for a chance in the quarterfinals. The tournament, I told you, will kick off on the 9th of August 2019. That's about 11 days from now. So let's wish the D Tigress all the best, the defending champions, and I think they have the quality to go there and do their thing once again. Coach uh, Otis Uli has called for camp. Uh, we'll try to be at that camp tomorrow and see how they are getting ready. Uh, but you know, the bulk of the team, they're still together. So that's, I think that's a big plus. Yeah, it's a big plus. And the bulk of the team are still together. Mm. We know they've done this before. They play as a team. And that is massive for any team that wants to make it uh, to the top. In basketball, so many emerging forces. Tunisia, we know what they can do. Cameroon, Senegal. So they don't have to rest on their walls this time around. They mm. don't have to get complacent or overconfident. And then if this is done and they play as a unit, I see them making it to Tokyo. 2020. Come, yeah. come, come next year. And I see your confidence. So they need to <laughs> uh, play as a team. Very, very important. I like that part. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I know it's going to be tough in Dakar uh, for the D Tigers, but hey, that's when you know uh, what champions are made of. They go through the tough times and then they come out. So Austin, uh, at this point, again. I think they are the sign of all eyes. So they must really watch it. Mm. Yeah, because other African countries are playing catch up. You know? <laughs> I mean, I yeah, well. <laughs> Senegal can tell you they have a team to win it. Angola can say they have a team to win it. We'll see. We'll see. It's the best of women's <laughs> basketball in Africa. And then I told you once again, it will, come, it will serve off uh, on the 18th, on the 9th of August and run till the 18th of August in Dakar, Senegal. Put that down just in case you're a big fan of basketball and you don't know. It's information that you can use. I told you tonight we're showing love. So the ladies will stay with the ladies. This time, talk about badminton. Doka Sadeshoko, she has ruled Africa. She has dominated badminton in Nigeria. The president of the Federation, of the Badminton Federation, Francis Obi, was here last night and told us that he's not disappointed with Dockers for not uh, winning at the Lagos International Badminton Championship. I said, why? He said, look, uh, the players that came to the event, they are busy, they have played a lot of badminton, and so their quality was nothing compared to Dockers. I caught up with Dockers at the Shokon right after the Lagos International Badminton uh, Championship. I said, Dockers, what's been your experience so far at the championship, and this was a response. Let's listen to her. It was very tough, and uh, I think it adds to our experience because this is the first time I'm playing, and uh, we'll not be able to get to semi-finals because uh, the rest, uh, Lagos Classic, I won bronze in my singles. But for this one, it was uh, 16. I got to the 16, and uh, it shows that uh, a lot of players are turning up, like. For us to have number 45 in the world, participating in this tournament, it shows uh, the tournament is big and it really helps us because playing with uh, Vietnam, uh, I think uh, I've not been to a, in any game like uh, world tournament, but this uh, Lagos Classic uh, helped me to play with top players and uh, I, I learned more and I gained more experience. We would like to have more of Nigerian players participating in this tournament. So, and we don't want this tournament to end, we want it to continue. So, Lagos should continue hosting this tournament because it really helps us and it really goes a long way. So, what's next? What should we be expecting from Dockers after this competition? Uh, we are preparing for all African games, which we are going to for the camp tomorrow. Uh, nothing less than gold from the all African games. And not only me, we Team Nigeria were promising to bring back the best for Nigeria. Uh, that's, a, that's a beautiful. A long-term plan right there for Dr. Sadeshaka. You can see, she said, look, no problem. It's the first time 
I'm not getting to the semis. I got out um, in, the, in the 16. I, it's just not bad. I've, I've learned from it, and she, she appealed that we should keep the competition going. Very, very important. She said, let's keep it going. That it's very good <laughs> for exposure and experience of Nigerian badminton players. Austin, I, so, I also want to join um, Doka, as you know, mm. in appealing to um, whoever is responsible for organizing this competition that they should keep it going. She, she, she's already rubbed shoulders with, with the I am mighty in badminton. We know what Dockers can do. We know what she's already brought to the table. And she's, she's also appealing, hey, the Unabakan Games is around the corner. We need to uh, uh, go there and make our impact felt. I, mm. I think it's a very good one for Dockers and other badminton players. We hope to see Nigeria win at least a medal in badminton come you know, next All-African Games in Rabat, Morocco. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so that's it uh, with the development of badminton in Nigeria. It's, it's important to, to see that some of our players are doing so, so well in other sports. That's Dorcas Adesha come for you with badminton. She's number one in Nigeria. She is number one this week. She's off it in Africa. The next week she's there uh, because Kate is not giving her a chance to actually stay there. But she has said with more badminton, with consistency, more exposure that Nigerian badminton players will do well, qualify for the Olympics, and of course, uh, sustain uh, the level of development. I like it so, so much, badminton in Nigeria. From there, let's talk about the development of rugby, rugby football in Nigeria. We had the national team coach, Bronson Ware, and the technical advisor uh, last week, Friday, on this show, and Ware talked about a lot of things that he believes can be achieved with rugby in Nigeria. One of them, go to the Ghana Invitation House and see uh, if the players actually have the quality. So tomorrow, they will take on Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast won their first match against Ghana. So it's an Invitation House featuring Ghana, Nigeria, and Ivory Coast. So Coach Ware says he wants to use this to see the quality in his team, that he wants fast-paced rugby. Rugby is beginning to look good also in the country. The league is vibrant. A lot of persons are showing interest in terms of playing, but still struggling for some following. So they believe that if they go to this championship, do well, the next in line for them is the Africa Cup qualifier. If they qualify for that one, the big one will be in November in South Africa, where they will go and compete for a slot at the Olympics. And this is rugby. And I keep telling everyone that, look, Nigeria... It's too big for me to just come here, you come here, and all we talk about is football and the Super Eagles. We've talked about badminton now. We've, we've talked about rugby. We, we'll talk about cycling. That's how it should be. A lot of diversification is going on in sport in Nigeria, and it gladdens the art of football, uh, of sport fans. You know, badminton, volleyball, basketball, and now rugby. I've been to the National Stadium and Onikon Stadium on, cup, on a couple of times, and I've watched the game of rugby. There is a vibrant league. I've mm -hmm. seen teams come from Kaduna, um, Akwaibom, Kalaba, you know, come to Lagos to face their counterparts uh, uh, in Lagos. For me, it's a good one. And now they are in Ghana to, uh, for an invitational tourney you know, for rugby. This will ensure that the coach, you know, the bench also, you know, uh, sports players that can represent Nigeria in international competitions. We've seen Wales, we've seen England, we've seen um, India, you know, do well in rugby. Nigeria can also get to that stage. And mm. that is what uh, uh, the process that uh, uh, we are undergoing at this point in time. Awesome. So that's it. The, the Black Stallions, that's what they are called. Uh, I'll keep educating you guys. It's the Super Eagles of Nigeria. It's the Black Stallions of Nigeria in rugby and the yellow greens for cricket. So you see, it's Nigeria. Come on, we're too big of a country. And we play other sports. So we'll continue to monitor the Black Stallions at that Ghana Invitational. They'll take on Cote d'Ivoire tomorrow, 12 noon, Nigerian time. So uh, just in case you're a big fan of rugby, you can find a way to go through that with live streaming. And uh, we will come back to talk about it. Hopefully, we'll have Coach Ware on this show uh, tomorrow night to analyze what. Uh, we'll go down what went down in that match against Cote d'Ivoire. I'm looking forward to its development of rugby in Nigeria, and um, we are hoping that it has actually come to stay. Let's talk about the Africa Track Cup. That one is cycling. We will go on this break. When we come back, we'll go to Abuja to talk about the Africa Track Cup where Nigeria dominated Africa, and then the African president of that federation is saying, look, Cycling can actually get better. Let's go on this break. When we come back, we'll do that and see if we can get Esther Brumet. Don't go anywhere. Stay.